everyone welcome back to the channel welcome to another video of our rgb system design playlist so in today's video we are basically going to cover this leader election and consensus algorithms with the help of examples and in details so we have two algorithms to cover wrapped and paxos but first we'll cover paxos first and in another video i'll cover wrapped because if i cover both of them the video will become lengthy and it will become a little bit confusing also so this is our fourth video in the second section of our system design uh, rgb system design playlist so overall it's our i think eighth video of the playlist so if you have not checked out this playlist i will request you to go and check the playlist where we are covering all the system design topics in a structured manner the best examples possible that i can give so that you can understand all the required system design concepts for your interview in the most lucid way possible all right okay without any further delay let's jump to our topic today okay so in today's video, we're going to discuss about Paxos in detail. Before Paxos and all everything, let's just understand why do we need leader election. In a distributed systems, multiple nodes typically need to coordinate uh, efficiently to perform a particular task. So choosing a leader ensures that not only one node makes the critical decisions, it also enables the entire system to avoid any uh, other conflicts that may arise. All right. So as I told, today we are going to explore the Paxos algorithm, which is useful for uh, implementing this kind of consensus algorithm, how the entire distributed system can reach to a consensus and one question that must come to your mind is why leader election matters actually do we really need leader election imagine that there is a distributed database like this all right where multiple servers store the same data let's say all of the database here store the booking data of a flight so if two nodes make a conflicting updates data inconsistent may arise let's say the same seat number is booked against two different users on the same date. So that will definitely uh, cause a conflict, right? So the leader election and the consensus algorithms ensures that only one node will commit the changes while other, other, uh, all other nodes will follow the changes. M multiple nodes cannot commit to a particular change. So we'll see, see how algorithms like Paxos solve these issues. What is Paxos? So Paxos is a you know family of consensus protocols that is used to achieve agreement in a distributed system. So it's, the word is important, it's agreement. First they will agree on what change to accept, then they will commit the change. It's not like a database uh, update request is sent to one node, it will directly update in the database. No, it's not. It doesn't work like that. So they will first agree upon a particular consensus, particular decision, then they will commit the update or write, do, commit the right request in the database. Basically, the PAX, in, in a Paxos algorithm, we have three main roles. All right. We have a proposer, we have an acceptor, and we have a learner. Now, what is the job of a proposer? So proposer basically suggests a value for agreement or the change that it is going to make. I mean, as a sample proposal will be, hey, uh, just book seat number 823 or one seat number 12 against Bob. And that is this, 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 right? That is a proposal. So the acceptor are the other nodes which vote on the proposed value. Let's say one node is proposing, the other node will be voting on the incoming commit request, incoming write request. Then there is a learner rule. I mean, using the learner, basically the entire system learns on the agreed upon value. And it just then uh, knows that, I mean, what was the final value that was written. I'll again explain in the ex explain with example, you'll we'll be able to understand it better. Now, if you talk about the steps of a Paxos algorithm, there is basically four phases. One is the prepare phase, then the promise phase, then the accept phase, and then the commit phase, right? So in the prepare phase, the proposer basically, if I just explain you, the theoretical part first. So in the prepare phase, the proposer, whoever is, let's say this node is the proposer, it's proposing a change. The proposer sends a prepare request with a unique proposal number. I mean, with some kind of unique identifier, it will send request to other that, hey, this is my request which I want to update. Next is the promise phase. In the promise phase, all other acceptor nodes, they will promise that, yeah, I am ready to accept your proposal and I won't accept any proposal which are which has the lower proposal number than the incoming proposal. Again, I'm going to explain with example, it will be understand it better, don't do it. Then there is the accept phase, like once the proposer, I mean the proposer's proposal is promised by the other acceptor node, they send back the promise to the proposer node, right, the first node, then once it receives the promise from the acceptor node, the, it will send again an accept request, yeah, okay, you have promised me that you are going to accept my changes, so yeah, please accept my changes now, I'm sending you accept request. So the proposer sends an accept request again. This is the proposer, it will send an accept request to all the acceptor node with the corresponding data, all right? Now, once the majority of the accept, let's say out, three, out of three, at least two nodes accept the incoming accept request or accept request from the proposer, the decision is finalized and the read, write operation is done to the databases. It is a bit com complex to implement and understand, but I'm going to give an example right now. Let's see, uh, consider a scenario where 
uh, two people are trying to book a seat in a, in the same flight on the same seat number seat eight eight two three. Let's now let's just talk about the first case. Let's say LS is a user from New York who is trying to book seat number eight twenty three in a particular flight. Bob also wants to book the set eight uh, twenty seat and seat number eight twenty three at nearly the same time. Now the problem here is. The system must ensure the entire system, distributed system must ensure that only one of them get the, gets the seat, not both of them gets the seat, and then it will cause a paragraph in the plane, right? Problem is if all the different databases, let's say this request Bob resides in Tokyo and Alice resides in New York, both of them try to book the seat from their respective towns or respective cities. So if the different database nodes, the data, database replicas process the request independently, then we could have double booking. That we understand clearly. So we need a consensus algorithm like Paxos in this case. Make sure that one version of the truth is stored and shared across all nodes. That means only one person is getting the particular seat at a time. So in this case, what are the uh, Paxos roles then or Paxos components? The first one is the proposer, right? Let's say LI's request was made to the New York database. Now in this case, the database node that receives a booking request, this acts as the proposer first, right? So this is my proposer. Okay. Now acceptor are the other database nodes. So these three are, the nodes will be the acceptor node. Then the learner again. Now once the consensus is reached, all nodes learn the final decision. So all of them will behave as the learner. Learner is the final step. We will come to that. Now let's simulate this scenario. Okay. Okay. The first case, allies tried to book the uh, seat number A23 and clicked on the book book button. Book seat A23. Now the database node in the New York wants to log the seat for allies, right? So what it will do? It will send a prepare request. So this is my prepare prepare request. Okay, so this is my allies prepare request or uh, this is my allies prepare request. So uh, the database node in New York basically sends a prepare request to multiple data nodes worldwide. So this request will be sent to all the database nodes. So now this request includes a special number or a proposal number called let's say N12. It's just a you know incremental counter which can there are again multiple ways to generate this number. You can use timestamp, you can use a distributed counter. Okay, or distributed global variable, global, globally said counter, or timestamp, then the node number. There are a lot of other types of ways to generate this number. But let's just uh, consider a simple use case. Let's say the proposal number is N12. Okay, it's incrementing like 12, 13, 14, and so on. So this request includes a proposal number uh, N12 and the, and the request detail, key book seat for A23 for allies. I mean the seat number, the user ID, etc. etc. Once all the acceptor nodes so these are my acceptor nodes now each of the acceptor node checks their history that if it has seen a higher proposal number or a lower proposal number i mean they will check that are there any other proposals with me like this a brown request is there are there any other request or any other proposal with me which has a higher proposal number than this if i don't have then i'll reject all the proposals with the lower number lower proposal number as i told each proposal con contains a proposal number Let's say they had some other proposal from any other user. Let's say and the proposal number was let's say N T N N five or N six. Then they will basically what they, what the acceptor node will do. They will promise not to accept any lower proposal number and they will accept only higher proposal number. So if a higher proposal number comes later, it will reject the earlier one. For example, right now they do, do not have any higher higher proposal number. This is the highest proposal number that they have read. That is N twelve. If in future or in the uh, uh, in the next span of time, if they get any other proposal with a higher proposal number, let's say N13 or N14, they're going to reject LI's proposal also. Okay, before going that, uh, going to that uh, rejection phase. Now that uh, they don't, do not have any other proposal than this, what they will do? They will send a accepting acceptance request to the uh, proposer. Right? All of this will send a request, a response back to the proposer, and they will send a message that yeah, I'm accepting LI's proposal that is N12, right? The proposal number is N12. And I promise not to accept any other lower proposal number. That means I am not going to accept any other proposal with uh, proposal number less than N12. This is the acceptance phase that, that has been done, right? Prepare was done, then promise. I mean prepare, then the promise that promised proposal back that they are not going to accept any other proposal, which, which is the lower proposal number. And they send, send a promise response. Now in the accept phase, uh, the proposer will try to send the accept request to all of them. Okay, yeah, now that you have promised, now please accept my proposal then. All right. Let's say at the same time, I mean when proposer node, that is a New York node is sending accept request to all of them. I mean accept my proposal request to all the acceptor node. In the meantime, let's say ki Bob's request came. 
to book the same seat but it came from the tokyo node tokyo database node because he booked from tokyo let's say and the request went to tokyo database node or database cluster basically his request now let's say a different proposer now tokyo becomes the proposer for bob right because the request uh, originated from the tokyo database cluster now what will happen now that this proposer node send ops proposal to other acceptor nodes what are the other acceptor nodes then the other acceptor nodes are uh, london singapore and new york now london uh, now if you see london has two proposals now with, with it singapore database node has two proposal request with it and new york node has one proposal request with it and tokyo node has ls proposal plus its own proposal right and all of them now have both two set of proposals with them now all the acceptors now these three acceptors london singapore and new york what they will do london will see that proposal n n13 is new york then uh, n12 we are assuming that bob's proposal had a proposal number of n13 so london will reject ls proposal basically this is rejected so london london node uh, votes for this bob proposal now singapore also has the same case already it accepted n12 but n3 n13 has come in as a new proposal so it has to make a promise that it is not going to accept any other proposal which has a lower uh, number right so n12 is lower than n13 so ls proposal is again rejected right by singapore now similarly tokyo as it is bob's proposal is the newest proposal it is also rejecting the ls proposal so so like this since n13 is higher all the other database node basically accept that ls request is rejected and they start to start processing bob's request now since the promise phase has been done right and now they start executing the accept phase now so in the final accept phase what the other all the nodes will accept all the acceptor node will accept that yeah finally we are going with the uh, bob's proposal and seat a23 is booked for bob this final decision is logged in the database so even if ls retries later i mean let's say refresh uh, ls refreshes the page page and retries in a after after a while the system will already have a record that seat a23 is booked and you cannot book further now once the final decision is locked all the acceptors inform all the database nodes about the final decision and now every database replica learns that a23 is taken now this is what the commit uh, i mean the learner learner role comes into the picture of each of the database node kehne ka matlab hai ki each database each database node can act as a proposer or acceptor and a learner okay so these three roles is related to each of the database nodes only and these are the phases now once every uh, database node learns about the final decision they will commit the uh, requests and that information will be updated in all the in the entire database cluster now with this entire process the system remains strongly consistent across global data set databases so leader election is used to used in distributed database in cloud services and blockchain networks etc so this paxos is a very popularly used consensus algorithm in a uh, in the google spanner which is a distributed sql cluster right database cluster you can read about google spanner so it has a very useful use cases in the google ads uh, system entire ecosystem along with google spanner it is a, this paxos is a foundation of aws dynamo db then apache zookeeper etc so it has a lot of use cases so to summarize leader election is crucial for maintaining consistency and in a distributed systems as we saw that's about the consensus algorithm of paxos so in our next video we will discuss in detail about the wrapped algorithm all right i'll explain in the detail example and if you found this video helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel and let's target for 50 likes of this uh, video so if you have any questions about whatever we discussed in this video uh, put them in the comment section so i'll keep creating this kind of system design concepts for you and help you better understand it in the most easiest way possible all right so if you have any questions put them in the comment section and we'll discuss there okay and keep an eye on the rgb system design playlist we are covering all the system design concept concepts in a well structured manner and in a simplest way possible with examples proper examples we are trying to understand so keep an eye on the rgb system design playlist also so thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one